The power of caps. Crime rates go down. The quality of life goes up. I'm Peter Carl, and this is Chicago Crime Watch. Chicago police take aim at two open-air drug markets in the Inglewood community, putting them both out of business. The year's first street corner conspiracy cases are called Operation Horsebrush and Operation Dogbane. The good thing about operations like this is that it shows what happens when the community comes forward and gets involved. Operation Dogbane focused on the area around 7500 South Stewart. The Narcotics and Gang Investigation Section, or NAGUS, initiated the mission last October after residents made numerous complaints of blatant narcotics activity in the area. Pastor Devon Brown's church sits right across the street from where the drug sales were taking place. I've seen a lot of things. I've seen things from violence. Uh, there has, at times, been persons who have been killed on drug-related matters, but on a daily basis, it generally would be people walking down the street or driving up the street and purchasing uh, drugs from the, the young people on the streets. The open-air drug market was run by members of the Gangster Disciples Street Gang, selling crack cocaine. During the first couple of weeks of the investigation, surveillance officers saw a couple of individuals at the location believed to be armed with handguns. The subjects were later stopped and caught carrying semi-automatic pistols. They got automatic guns, the semi-automatic guns. What are they using that for? There is no other reason to have it. The other operation, Horsebrush, took place in the area around 6200 South Honoré. This open-air drug market also involved the gangster disciples selling heroin. The majority of narcotic sales took place in vacant two-flat apartments located across the street from one another. It was determined a second-floor apartment at 6250 South Honoré was being used as a stash house for the drugs. One time, the ringleader dropped bags from the second-floor window and had the money collected at street level. Surveillance officers also observed an offender on several occasions displaying a handgun once even pointing it at the head of another drug seller while on the street. In another incident, the offender displayed his 45 caliber semi-automatic pistol to an undercover officer, saying this was the way to keep stick-up men away. These bad guys have got very, very sophisticated. They have operations where they pass off, they have lookout men, they have weapons to protect these locations. In both cases, the conspiracy investigations were initiated following calls and complaints from residents, elected officials, community and faith-based leaders, and business owners. We've been complaining about it, giving them descriptions, nicknames, homes that we thought that the uh, uh, narcotics were being sold out of, um, and the people we thought had them. Chicago police say in order for them to continue to bust up drug activity, it's paramount that the public stays active in CAPS programs, goes to beat meetings, and provides information to police. The citizens who live in the community are our eyes and ears. They see what's going on. They know exactly who's doing wrong, who's selling drugs, where they're hiding the drugs at, what type of cars that are delivering the drugs, things of that nature. So without the citizens, we couldn't do this. Inglewood resident Van Esther Grishan says she has no problem telling the drug dealers and gangbangers she'll fight for her neighborhood. I told them that they didn't leave from our area, that I would call 911, in which I do all the time. They know I do, and I wait for the police. I don't throw a brick and hide my hands. I call them and I wait for them to come, and they come. There are more people getting involved, especially young people with caps that we're trying to get more involved because our seniors have been carrying the load. So our focus is to get these young people involved in caps so that they know these guys. And it's not so much you tricking on them, actually you're saving their lives. Around 75th and Stewart, not only is there the Faith United Methodist Church, but there's an elementary school and grocery store. Pastor Brown says neighborhood residents had several meetings to protest the drug trafficking and worked with police for a number of years to clean it up. Now, he says, the street is quiet. I think that's the exciting thing about seeing the change that's occurred because it makes you feel like your efforts are not in vain. Um, when you have a community and the police department working together, and I think you have a good chance of having some impact. We have a partnership on the CAPS, and it has worked really, really well. Uh, I'm very pleased with the work that they do, and every time they take a gun off the street, that's a big plus for the children and the senior citizens.
At least 20 offenders have been arrested and charged as a result of the two street corner conspiracy operations. And Chicago's new police superintendent takes the oath of office, becoming the 50th superintendent of police. The office of? The office of? Superintendent of police. Superintendent of police. For the city of Chicago. For the city of Chicago. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations, you are installed. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. And I know you're going to do it. And in front of his wife, Janice, family, friends, and command staff, Superintendent Jody P. Weiss was also presented with the superintendent's gold star. The department's 50th superintendent then met the media, promising to reach out to Chicago's communities. We have to have a community that has confidence and trust in its police officers. And we have to make sure our police officers deal with the community in a respectful way, in a way that will promote a collaborative effort. Because it, no crime problem can be solved simply, simply through the police department. It has to be a joint effort with the communities, with business and civic leaders, and with us. And it will be a joint effort, which I will focus on very strongly. Superintendent Weiss is only the second civilian to serve as Chicago's police superintendent. Prior to his arrival, he served as FBI special agent in charge in Philadelphia. That's it from the Crime Watch News Team. I'm Peter Carl. Thanks for watching.